And I love that Paul, who wrote and uh, encouraged us with the fruit of the Spirit, also wrote to the Galatians and said, do not weary in doing good. Well, what does that indicate? It's, it's going to at times feel exhausting. So Chris, as you were listening, uh, listing out what you did at A21 and also like local church initiatives or what we're doing in our communities, you can be weary. Your soul could be tired. And maybe you might be watching this and you're in a season, uh, whether you are watching this online or on television or someone sent you a link and you just feel tired. You feel like, Lord, I have been doing good and I'm not seeing the fruit. Well, Paul speaks to that. He says, don't grow weary in doing good for in due season. In due season, you will reap a harvest. So Paul is really using a lot of agricultural terms that maybe if you were in urban or suburban environments, it's not something that we understand fundamentally. But he knows that there is a process to inherit that fruit. And so he says, hey, uh, Paul also, when he wrote to Timothy, his son in the faith, he gave him these three different examples. Hey, press in like an athlete. Go hard like an athlete. Hey, don't give up like a soldier. And my favorite one in regards to the conversation at hand is like a, a, a farmer. You will reap a harvest in due season. And so we're going to have moments where we just really feel exhausted. And I want us to kind of pause. I want us to recognize that feeling, acknowledge a feeling. And then, darn it, get back up and keep on doing good. Do not grow weary in doing good, for in due season we'll reap a harvest. And I'm, I'm taking that word for, as a church planner in Orange County, California, I'm taking that word as a wife. I'm taking that word as a stepmom. I'm taking that, wor my, that word as a, 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 a teacher and a leader. I'm not going to grow weary in doing good. And when we do that, we're also exhibiting this, this sense of endurance that Paul's writing to the Galatians and having them not forget. Onika, what does this mean to you, this goodness mean to you? Yes, I um, just as I'm hearing both of y'all talk, it's making me think about the difference between our own good, you know, checking the box of like, I'm good, my kids are good, my family's good, but versus the greater good. And I think sometimes when we're just good, but we're not concerned about the greater good, then we're doing our communities and our world a disservice. And it's easy when we have, you know, two two refrigerators with everything stocked and we have all the things that, um, you know, we need in this season, but to forget about our neighbors who might not have what they need. And so sometimes we think, well, we're doing good because we're watching church online or we're going to church in person and we're checking all of our boxes, but to not forget about our brothers and sisters who might not be doing good and feeling good, even though everyone around us seems good. Sometimes you can just look down your neighborhood street and think, oh yeah, our world is good. Everybody's doing good. But to ask God to give ourselves eyes to see those that aren't doing good. And even when we grow weary in doing well, I think we're energized when we're making sure and ensuring that other people are doing well. In James 1, it talks about for us not to simply be hearers of the word, but doers of the word. And in this entire week, Monday through Thursday, we've been speaking about the fruit of the spirit. Now, my fear is we're going to watch this program. And then we're going to turn turn off the television. We're going to walk away and forget what we just learned. And so this is my encouragement. I want us, uh, James, after he says, don't just be hearers of the word, but be doers of the word. He says that the person who reads the word and walks away and does not do anything with it is like the man who looks at himself in the mirror, walks away and forget what he looks like. I want us to be men and women of the word where we hear this do good and we take these principles, whether it's our speech, whether it's our action, whether it's our time, whether it's our resource or our finances. So everyone who is watching right now, whatever time zone, whatever country, whatever continent, whatever city, whatever community, this is what I want us to do. I want us to be doers of the word. Like Chris said, you don't need to be a million to make a big impact? What does it look like to stand outside and hold the door open for someone? What does it look like to buy a cup of coffee for the homeless man outside? What does it look like to make a meal for your neighbor or to financially bless a single mom in this season? I want us to be doers of the word of God. And y'all, we've been sitting here talking about the fruit of the spirit. I think it's high time we are harvesting some fruit and start sharing with our neighbors. So I got some love, but I also got a lot of challenges. Maybe not be hearers of the word or talkers about the word, but maybe we actually go out and do the, what the word tells us to do. I hope you enjoyed this video. Subscribe today and you'll never miss a new upload. And don't forget to check out our Better Together shop. Thanks for being a part of our community.